Hello, this video is going to show how we can achieve functional safety using analog devices cross-core IDE. I could have done a demonstration using a shark target, but what I've got connected to my laptop at the moment is this Blackfin target. This is analog devices cross-core IDE, and I've created a number of simple projects here, and this is the particular project I'm interested in. Let's go first of all and build it. As we can see, it's using the cross-core Blackfin compiler and it's compiled for a, a BF706. Now, what I'd like to be able to do is to first of all to, to be able to look at this source code and see, well, is it compliant to a standard such as MISRA? I'd also like to be able to measure some metrics on this code and get an idea of, well, how complex is it? Then I'd like to be able to execute the code on the target. And as the code executes, I want to be able to find out, well, how much of that code have we actually exercised? And then finally, I'd like to do some unit testing on the target to check that for particular inputs, I'm getting the expected outputs. And at the same time, I want to be able to measure the coverage so I can get 100% coverage of my code. Now, the starting point is I've installed into the IDE, the LDRay perspective. So I'm able to, to select this perspective and now I'm going to be able to right click. And first of all, I want to decide, well, what files am I interested in analyzing? Well, in that case, that's these two that I've written. I'm not interested in the files that are auto-generated by analog devices here. So those are the two I'm interested in. So let's start by doing a analysis. This is now starting to analyze the code and we're going to be able to, to see is this code compliant to MISRA. Well, it wasn't written to be compliant to MISRA, so I'm pretty sure we're going to get quite a few violations. We can, of course, use any other coding standard. In this case, we can see we've tested against MISRA. Lots of violations here. Let's go down and let's take a look at this one here. Double click, opens up the editor and there we can see we've started a define with an underscore and that's not allowed. So that's very easy to fix. OK, let's take a look now at maybe a uh, core graph. The core graph, we can put this into various different modes. So maybe let's take a look at a maintainability metrics core graph. And there we can see we can see all the, the functions. We can see how they're interconnected and at the same time, We've measured a number of metrics on the code, things like the cyclomatic complexity. And I can sort and rapidly find the most complex function. That's this one with a cyclomatic complexity of nine. Well, let's view that graphically with a flow graph. So here we have a graphical representation of the code. And if I was to click on a particular block of code, we're going to see the corresponding code over here. Here I've got a particular block which corresponds to this one over there. If I was to click on a particular branch, we'd be able to see this is the branch between this bit of code and that bit of code. Now, what I want to be able to do is to execute the code and find out, well, how much of this code have we exercised? So we're going to instrument the source code. We're going to put probes at the start and at the end of each block of code. So let's go and do that. So close those down and let's go and instrument the source code and then build it. This is now putting the probes into the code. It's now doing the build. And now we should be able to execute the code on the target. So there we can see it's connecting to my target. It's executed it. We've got the data back from the target. Let's take a look at the results and see, well, what coverage did we achieve? So we're just analyzing the results here from the target. And we should be able to find out the coverage that we've obtained. So let's go and view the coverage. OK, so there we can see 84% statement coverage, 65% branch decision, 25% MCDC. Well, let's go back to a core graph and let's view that uh, via the core graph. So in this case, we put that into a coverage view and we can see we have full coverage for many of these functions, but the integer to ASCII we haven't. Well, let's take a look and see what coverage we did obtain. And here we can see very clearly that we have a, a branch here 
that we've not executed. Looks like I haven't tried it with digits equal to zero. And then we have a, a number of blocks here that haven't been executed. Because no, I've never given it a value less than or equal to 180. So let's use the unit testing tool tbrun in order to be able to complement this coverage. So let's go and invoke tbrun. So tbrun is going to allow me to create tests. So let's create a test for the integer to ASCII. So unit test integer to ASCII. I want coverage. I'm going to select the just the main. And let's go and uh, Let's create any stubs in case we need any stubs. We'll create user globals and we'll do a test build. So that's now done the test build. So that's good. So there was a function that was missing. So automatically that has been stubbed. And now I'm going to be able to start testing this function. So let's go and create a, a test case here. And let's give it a value that's less than 180. So I'm just going to accept the defaults here. And there we can see we have a number of inputs and outputs. So I'm going to put a value in here of 179. Digits will have three. Blanks will have zero. And I expect the output should be character one. And then it's going to be character seven. Character nine. Nope, sorry, these are the inputs. So let me select all those. And I'll just set those all to, uh, let's set them all to, to zero. So just highlight those again and select them all to, to zero. Right, and the output is what I'm expecting to be character one, and then character seven, and then it should be character nine, and then, well, well, we'll see what the tool puts in for the rest, but it should be character zeros, and then probably three at the end. So let's run this and see what happens. So it's generating the harness, it's built it, it's executed on the target, and there we can see it did give me 179. I really should have put in here, as I mentioned, the zeros and then three at the end. So let's accept that and we'll go and run this a second time. And then we should find that it regresses and our test passes. At the same time, we should now be able to see we have increased coverage. So if I was go over to here and take a look at the integer to ASCII, we can now see that we've got 96% statement coverage. Once again, on a flow graph, we should be able to see that we've now executed these paths. I now just need to have this path that's executed. And again, I can create a test case where I give a value that's less than 100, and then I'll have digits equal to 1 or 2. OK, so very rapidly, that's given a, a quick overview of how we can perform functional safety using the analog devices cross-core IDE. And if you'd like any more information, then please don't hesitate to contact us at LDRA. Thank you.